I once wanted to speak to you that the chairman of the Republican Party of Cookies County, his name is William Bell, and he wants to say a few words to you. First off, I want to thank you for inviting me in, the Seniors for Change, and inviting me to come in. Uh, you may be aware that we are planning to put this on the straw poll. It will be on the May 22nd ballot. The final determination of the verbiage of what we plan to put on the straw poll is not defined as a group. And the reason is the Democratic Party, David Robinson and that group, actually reached out to us a week or so ago because now they've decided they would, they want to try and emulate what we put on the straw poll so every voter in Pickens County will be able to voice their opinion about it. So we're happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, just to give you all some uh, an overview of this, because there's been a lot of un misunderstanding, maybe some misinformation put out there by multiple parties. A straw poll in Georgia is a constitutional event. When a citizen or a group of citizens wants to put forth an idea to the voters in a county, they can request it through their county commissioners, they can request it through their Republican or Democratic parties, or they can get it from their state <coughs> legislators, being their state representatives and state senators. The state senator, Steve Gooch, was the one that actually helped this group to uh, kind of drill down on how they wanted to approach it. And then we agreed after a conversation with Senator Gooch that we would work with the group on that. The straw poll is only a question to the voters. But what you'll see on that May 22nd is looking at different options. We're going to have up to three options that we're going to discuss and put forth the ideas. It is not legislation. I want to make that very clear. So. A one-line paragraph or a one-line summary on a straw poll is not the legislation. And I say there are a lot of seniors here. I guess you, most of you are from Dickens County. The example I can use best that may will make you happy or give you heartburn is our three- and five-person commission configuration. The majority of voters in this county wanted a five-member commission with a county manager. Well, as you know, that's not what we have. Because once it goes to Atlanta and goes through all the different committees in the House and the committees in the Senate, what we send down there may not be word for word what we get back. So I wanted to make that abundantly clear on the front end as well. Because that's been a, a deep misunderstanding that people thought that what we sent would be what we get back. So, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll have it out uh, on Monday the 12th. We'll have the final verbiage. It'll be in the instrument of record, which is Pickens County Progress. Thanks, Mr. Poole, for being here. So you'll be able to read it in next week's paper, the exact verbiage of the straw poll questions. So I'm here tonight from the GOP party to listen to what y'all have to say and uh, take that in turn, our account and feedback. Thank y'all. may affect the county and the school system. Our opponents always harp on the fact that a senior tax exemption will hurt our children and the school system. Nothing is further from the truth. I'm here to give you some information that will help you understand that a meaningful senior property tax exemption will not hurt our school system. Many people have the misconception that once the tax exemption is passed and enacted, it will be automatically granted whether they want it or not. That is not true. It is just like any other tax exemption. You have to go to the tax assessor's office, give them the required information, and request it. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, Pickens County has approximately 30,000 residents. Of that 30,000, approximately 20% of its residents are old, over age 65. A statement in the local newspaper in April of last year stated, and I quote, of the 42,940,989 total school budget, 
$21,497,613 is collected locally in ad valorem, which is school taxes. If 20% of the local collections were exempted and the budget remained the same, it would require an additional 3.196 mills to be applied to those taxpayers who did not qualify for exemption to make up for the shortfall. Except for the dollar amounts, that statement is totally erroneous. If you multiply 30,000 by 20%, it gives an answer of 6,000. That's 6,000 individuals, not 6,000 homes who are age 65 and over. We're taxed per residence, not per person. Except for those who are widowed, seniors usually live two to a house. So if you assume that there are 3,000 females and 3,000 males, and that's 6,000 total, that's a possible 3,000 homes. Now we're looking at 10% and an estimated projected tax increase of 1.59. Actually, the U.S. Census Bureau says there are 2,767 males in this county and 3,047 females aged 65 and older living in Pickens. You got to swim out there. They're fighting. <laughs> As stated in a Northwest Georgia Regional Commission report, there are approximately 14,139 housing units in Pickens County, and 8,696 of those are owner occupied. The U.S. Census Bureau of Atlanta states there are approximately 2,902 homes owned and occupied by people aged 65 and over, so that's close to that guesstimate of 3,000. My calculation shows so this age group pays only 3.3% of the school taxes. According to that same Northwest Georgia Regional Commission report, the average home value in Pickens County is 182429 However, we pay taxes on the fair market value as assessed by the county. Information gleaned from the Tax Commissioner's Office states that the average fair market value of homes in Pickens is around $150,000. We pay taxes on 40% of the fair market value. So multiply $150,000 by 40% and subtract the allot to the homestead exemption of $5,000. That gives $55,000 that it has with an average fair market value of $150,000 has to pay taxes on. And if you multiply the $55,000 by the 216 county, county tax meal rate of 0 0.007953, that's per thousand, that calculates to $437.41 owed in county taxes. Multiply the same $55,000 by the 2016 school tax meal rate of 0.01598, that's per thousand. That calculates to $878.90 that a home with an average fair market value of $150,000 pays in school taxes. So by this calculation, <coughs> excuse me, we can say that the average homeowner pays roughly $879 in school taxes using the 2016 mill rates. Using the information from the U.S. Census Bureau of 2,902 homes, owned and occupied by seniors age 65 and over, that equals to roughly a projected loss of $2,550,858 in school tax revenue. For 2017, with a new mill rate, the projected loss would be $2,498,622. Using the above projected tax increase of 1.59 that I just spoke about, homeowners under the age of 65 and the 2016 mill rate of 0.01598, that's per thousand again, which would increase the school tax to 0 0.01725 and the above data of 55000 on that $150,000 assessed value home. It would show an increase of school taxes for that person of only $87.45 that a home with a fair market value of $150,000 would pay in additional school taxes. Of course, using the 2017 mill rate of 0 0.01566, the increases would be smaller. And if you refer to one of your handouts there, what is this, a tax increase chart? It tells you 
what the increased taxes would be for people who would not be eligible for a senior tax exemption. And using the high amount that I've calculated, 1.5 million, it gives an estimate of the, so if you're in between 100 and 150,000, you know, it's going to be somewhere between 55 and 87. And if you use the low projected value of three quarters of a mil, this is the additional school taxes that someone would pay for the $4,350 and $300,000 home. But remember, these are only projected values, only. These amounts would be even lower given the variables, which are. Some seniors feel that it's their obligation to pay school taxes and will not take the exemption. Some senior homeowners are part-time residents and will not be eligible for the exemption. <coughs> One tax exemption has an income cap and the third plan has a maximum assessed value. Since we really do not know the impact a senior tax exemption will actually have on the school taxes collected, a five-year sunset clause has been built into each of the tax plans. At the end of five years, if the loss of school tax revenue is substantial, the issue can revisit, be revisited and the appropriate adjustment can be made to the tax exemption law. The tax exemption cannot be taken away. It can only be adjusted and that adjustment has to be placed on the ballot and approved by the voters. So they just can't, the tax assessor's office just can't come in and say, okay, we're going to do this. We're not getting enough money, so we're increasing the <coughs> It has to be on the ballot. But you have to vote for it. <coughs> the sunset clause allows the county time to assess what the actual cost of the exemption will be. The cost of this exemption is to be projected anywhere from three-quarter of a mil to 1.5 mil increase. But because the actual cost could be higher than the projected cost, a sunset would allow an adjustment to be made at the end of a five-year period. Data collected during this period will help determine if the exemption should be adjusted. The projected cost is not certain because the data needed to make an accurate projection does not exist. In other words, there's, there's, there's no data to tell us exactly what the income will be. The projection is based on records maintained by Pickens County government. Our projections assume that every person eligible for the exemption will claim it. We know this is not 100% true but we do not know how far off the projection is. We will not know the true impact until the exemption has been passed and eligible persons have claimed it. The county will have much better data about the true impact and appropriate limits after it's been in effect for five years. <coughs> the demographic composition of Pickens County may be different in five years than it is today. Changing demographics, demographics and changing legislation illustrates why we need to be able to re revisit the tax exemption and respond to changing factors. The sunset would allow the county and or the school board to respond to these changing factors. Many seniors have also expressed concern that they might be hit with higher taxes again in five years. If the landscape changes such that we need to adjust the exemption in five years, the county and the school board is much more likely to examine income caps, assessment limits, or other tiered tax relief before it would do away with the city tax exemption altogether. The school, <clears throat> the school budget for 2016 was $42,940,989. Total school taxes levy was $21,497,613. QBE, which stands for Quality Basic Education Funds, received from the state amounted to $19,000,000. 881,989. Other state sources and fund balance make up the balance of the budget. The mill rate for 2017 is 15.66, and the 2017-18 school budget <coughs> increased from the 42 million nine hundred and something to 45 million three hundred thirty-one thousand. The total school taxes levied was 21 million four hundred sixteen thousand. 418. Monetary allotment from the state was 23,914,582. 
So you see that they almost they went up almost three million, but they didn't increase our taxes. They got the money from the state, almost three million dollars extra, even though our taxes remained the same. We didn't get an increase. In fact, for 2017, we got a decrease. Some people did. <laughs> <laughs> According to Amy Smith, CFO of the school board, the money received from the state depends on student count. Right now that count is approximately 4,453. The higher the student count, the more money received from the state. If the monetary allotment received from the state doesn't make up the difference between the budget and the amount collected by ad valorem taxes, which is school taxes, then the school board has a few options, including grants, to make up the difference. Another problem that lessens the amount of money received by the schools is the fact that the county takes 2.5% from the taxes collected, which amounts close to half a million dollars. If the it is the county's fee for collecting the school taxes. It is our contention that Pickens County should choose to let the school board keep that money. According to the tax commissioner's office, the number of homeowners claiming the current school tax exemption of less than 25,000 income is 456 with 64 disabled veterans claiming the present exemption. At present, Pickens County tax meal rate is 23.54. <coughs> However, that doesn't take into account the backdoor tax increases, which would significantly increase the rate for many homeowners. Remember, the current 25,000 income rate <coughs> includes Social Security and Pension Retirement Benefits. A review of the surrounding county's tax exemptions law shows that just about every one of those counties excludes Social Security and Pension Retirement Benefits in their exemption requirements. Now, everybody know what a backdoor tax increase is? No? Okay. Uh, I'll give you an example. It, okay, you have a certain amount for taxes, okay, 23, whatever, whatever this is, for the county, 23 something, for the county. Okay, and they say, oh, we're going down on the tax mill rate this year, which for 2017, they did. But they didn't go on to tell you that <coughs> they increased the assessed value of your home and you didn't get the tax break. That's called a backdoor tax increase. Your value of your home, assessed value of your home went up, but the tax rate didn't. That's a backdoor tax increase. And it's happening, it happened to me. I didn't get to take advantage of a decrease in school taxes this past year because they upped the assessment on my house, so I didn't get to take advantage of it. An advantage to having additional tax exemptions for seniors is that it will force the county administrators to balance their budgets and cut fat from those budgets. It will also force the tax assessor's office to equalize the assessments of property, especially land values. A senior tax exemption will also force the county to become more accountable to its taxpayers and provide better training for the county tax administrators. There is a growing list of new buildings and homes being constructed in the Pickens County. A 12-unit senior living apartment building has been added to the Rock Creek Manor area. In 2017, 121 seven permits were issued for the new single-family detached homes in Pickens. That's an increase of 14% over 2016. Two new mini warehouses totaling 6,600 square feet has been added in the Seth storage complex off Hubbard Road. Good Samaritan Medical Clinic has added approximately 7,000 square feet in a two-story building on Samaritan Way. A Popeye's restaurant is being constructed on Highway 53 across from Wendy's Restaurant. Hemlock's Landscaping is constructing a 3,200 square foot building on Refuge Road. Jasper Paint and Body is adding approximately 6,800 square feet to their building. New medical structures are being built in front of Prestige Primary Care. High Country Trolleys has purchased the old train depot and has renovated it for use. How it is to be used is still being discussed, but wouldn't it be nice if we had something like Blue Ridge? 
where we take tourists up to the mountains. I mean, that would generate a lot of income. You could have half the stations where you buy tickets. The other half could be devoted to local artists. We have a lot of local artists, <coughs> wonderful artists in this county. Of course they are. And, you know, that would be great. That would be something to do with that depot. And it would bring income into this county. The Atlanta VA Healthcare System announced they will bring a VA clinic to Jasper and has confirmed the lease agreement totaling four million over a ten year period. Plus two million more than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. A new eighty bed assisted living home is being built behind Eagles. Appalachian Guns has expanded its business. The building will be about fifteen thousand square foot including a 3,000 square foot of retail space. Roland Tire Center has added a new business near Walmart, and the County <coughs> Airport Authority has given a thumbs up to a deal that will add more hangers to their already burgeoning business. There are probably more that I haven't covered, but to get the <coughs> general idea of the new construction going on in the county, all of it increases the tax base and the tax revenues. Mill rates are based on county proceeds. With all the new commercialism underway, there may not even have to be a tax increase to make up for the potential loss in revenue that additional senior tax exemptions would incur. Our opponents are missing a key point, and that is, if the senior exemption situation was resolved, ultimately the county would experience more growth, which would lead to an increase in the tax rolls. Right now, many seniors are moving out of the county because of the lack of a meaningful senior tax exemption. And I get emails from people who saw the Pickens County Seniors to Change website and had struck Pickens County off their list at the place they want to retire in. They chose a county that has a meaningful senior property tax exemption. My next example is, oh yeah, here it is. Right now, the senior tax exemption is for if you make $25,000 or less, and that includes Social Security and your pension retirement benefits. Well, the tax assessor's office says entire household. Anybody in that house, you count their income. Well, that's not what the law says. And I've brought this up many, many times to Roy Dodd, but he won't change his mind. To him, this means entire household. But at the law, and this is the tax bill that I, I mean, the house bill, that I've got the legal law that was passed and signed by the governor back in 97. It says the amount of income which that person and all members of the family residing within the homestead received during the last tax year. Members of family, not entire household. So people have been denied for 20 years that they could have used that $25,000 or less income <coughs> because some people the tax assessor's office, reads that all members of the family as being entire household. If there's someone living in your house, for one reason or another, dire circumstances or whatever, and they're not a family member, their income should not be counted. And that's what the law says, but you can't convince some people. <coughs> All this being said, I have recently been informed of some changes to the tax plans being considered by our legislatures. And we'll touch briefly on it, but this is a little bit more in depth. We can only have three straw poll questions on the ballot. By Georgia law, one of the questions has to be whether or not to leave the tax exemption as is, meaning the current less than $25,000 income, which includes Social Security and pension. So one of the tax exemption proposals that we have come up with over the past year, year and a half, has to be struck off. The Georgia legislature is taking Plan A off the table. That was the one with the total exemption for everyone over the age of 65 and had less than 10 acres. The other two plans are open for discussion. One of our plans was to increase the income exemption to $40,000 and exclude Social Security and retirement pension benefits. Our Georgia legislatures want to reduce that to $30,000 and exclude only Social Security and Medicaid. In other words, they would count your retirement pension benefits. 
only thing that would be excluded from that 30,000 total would be Social Security and Medicaid benefits. Our other tax proposal plan called for $153,400 off the assessed value of the home. Our representatives in the capital want to reduce that to $40,000, which is unacceptable to us. Our group would be willing to compromise and lower the amount to $100,000, but no lower. And if you refer to your handouts of your assessed value, there's assessed value comparison. It shows you what taxes you would be paying in school taxes, the amount, the, the uh, fair market value of a home from $100,000 to $400,000. And using the watered down version of $40,000 of assessed value, you see that it helps no one unless your land and house is $100,000 or less. I mean, you would get some, but not much. And then down here it shows if the school tax proposal amount of 100000 of assessed value with both 16 and 17 rates. You see, nobody pays it until they get to, if your house is worth more than 250000 I think that's more, that's a better plan. What do y'all think? Than the 40000 I mean, no. Using that 40000 if it, if it got used, the people now, the 400 and some odd people that currently taking the 25000 or less income, they would wind up paying some school taxes because $40,000 is not enough to take care of them. Right now they pay no, no school taxes, but using the 40000 the seniors that take it, the $25,000, would be paying school taxes. So you're punishing them. That 40000 is punishing them. One of the most important part of our tax plans was to make sure the tax law included a cost of living adjustment, or COLA. Neither of the two plans suggested by our legislature committee includes that clause. This is totally, totally unacceptable. Any plan that comes before the taxpayers must include a cost of living adjustment. And if these plans are not worded exactly as we have laid them out, the tax assessor's office will just keep increasing your fair market value of our homes until virtually no one gets to take advantage of the exemption. We'll be right back where we start. We have proven that a meaningful senior tax exemption is viable in Pickens County and there should be little compromise on what we want. Many of us have been paying into the education system for 50 plus years. We've seen our children graduate high school. We've seen our children graduate college. We've seen our grandchildren graduate high school and many of us have seen our grandchildren graduate college. I think we have already given enough, especially since we seniors are no longer part of the workforce and live on fixed incomes. Now, if anybody wants to call with anything else, you can, I've got something over there you can fill out, to, and I'll email it, and if you don't have an email address, I'll, just, I'll mail it to your physical address. Uh, and I know some of these calculations might be confusing to you. If you let me know, I'll, I'll send you the calculations and I'll get back up of where I got everything. Uh, also, if there's people in here that aren't registered to vote, is it very important you go to the polls on May 22nd on this straw poll. This will determine what goes on the general election in November. So you've got to vote. There's voter registration cards over there. All you have to do is fill them out and mail them in. And you've got until April 24th for the straw poll in order to vote on it. And you've got October the 9th in order to vote in the general election. Okay, now it's time we had somebody else speak besides me. Okay, Kevin. Yes, ma'am. Kevin gave me his permission to read his email that he sent me when he signed up for picking seniors for change. <coughs> said, greetings. I'm not a senior yet, but I can share a lot of unpleasant stories dealing with the tax assessor's office. <laughs> 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 Including more dogs flat out asking me, what do you do for a living anyway? What business is that as his? Anyway, this year I appealed through about eight parcels of land for being overvalued and provided supporting documentation. Each of my appeals was flat out rejected with no change. They even used an improved parcel as a comp to artificially boost the value 
appeal to the next level, the Board of Equalization, we have yet to have a response. I'm fed up with the attitude of the employees in the tax office, acting as if I'm disturbing them when I come into the office. My neighbor told me about your group, and I will pass your information on to anybody I come across. You got anything to add to that, Kevin? Well, I do, I do have uh, some information. Hello, I live in the Salico Highlands. Uh, been here 20 years from Cobb. Uh, I'm fighting the tax office right now on, on the back door, to you call it the back door tax. Uh, a lot of the parcels that, the, uh, they, that I have, unimproved lots, uh, the assessor office uh, values them at about three times the, the actual sales price. And I compile some data and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, once again appeal and uh, find out why, why do they have these values so high when the sales uh, data doesn't justify those sales prices. And uh, I mean, doesn't, doesn't justify their appraised values. And uh, I even said, I would like to, if you think it's worth that, I would be glad to sell it to you, but it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Is there Mr. Jerry Bright here tonight? Oh, he said he's going to be here and I can read his uh, email. But since he's here, I better not read it. He might not want me to. So since he's not here, we'll skip that one. And Homer, this is yours. What did I say? <laughs> it's past time for those of us who live in Pickens County demand that our budgets get balanced and that we treat our senior citizens with the same respect as other Georgia counties have been doing for years. Please let me know if A needs to help with this campaign. <laughs> you got anything else to say, Homer? If I can get out of this comfortable county. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to my son down in Cobb County last night, told him John and I were coming to this meeting tonight, and he reminded me that Cobb County does have a senior exemption. Mm -hmm. Why should Cobb County have anything that we don't? <laughs> Cherokee County. Yeah, there's several. Did you look in your research? And by the way, you've done a great job with all those numbers. Okay, thank you. But did you see how many counties there are in our great state? I've been up here for 34 years from Orlando, and I love it. I only go back down there to visit my sister. But how many counties do we have in Georgia that are caring about us older folks? Well, all we did once up here in North Georgia, I got a, every one of them, uh, I found, I don't know, I've got a stack here somewhere. But, yeah, this is them. Every county up in this area, and I've got a bunch of them up here, have a senior tax exemption. They may be less, you know, we've got 25,000 right now in the current one. Uh, <coughs> Several of them have 10,000, but they exclude Social Security and pension retirement benefits. You know, the 25,000 would work for us if they excluded the Social Security and the pension retirement benefits. That's all I mean. Yeah, well, that's what it, most of us. And we, we don't get raises. The young workforce, they get raises. We don't. We're, we're living on fixed income with that little pitiful 2% raise we got. It got, it got absorbed by the increase in our uh, uh, medical. So our take-home pay remains the same. My take-home pay has remained the same for seven years. In fact, one year it went down because the medical care went up. I mean, would young people, working age people, work at a job where they didn't get a raise for seven years and their insurance kept going up. No, they couldn't go to another job. We don't have a choice. We're completely dependent on the federal government. And our insurance keeps going up and, and Mr. Beck, or, or what's his name? Neil Beck. Larry, yeah, he keeps, he said it's going to go up 25% again. You know, groceries keep going up, taxes keep going up. So that's what we're fighting for right now. Now this one is from a man who sent me through my website. His name is Norman Campbell. He can't be here tonight, but he lives in Lithonia. He writes, we are looking for a retirement location and found Jasper. Then, unfortunately, found this website. <laughs> it's just terrible that we have to look elsewhere. We are financially com comfortable 
and we'll pay cash for our next home, but you have lost us. Let us know if you reconsider sticking it to the seniors who could enrich your town. Thank you. <laughs> now, this one's anonymous. Um, sometimes I get uh, emails from people say, uh, you know, take me off your list. I've moved. And this lady sent me this the other day. Sorry, but I couldn't afford Jasper any longer and sold my house and moved. Just remind them that if all the seniors live, they will be replaced by younger families with children who will then require more schools and teachers. It seems like it lose lose to me. <laughs> and that's about all I got. Uh, I've got more, but I'm, I got two of the meetings. I don't try to keep them all different, not repeat the same over and over again. Uh, I guess you've all seen this newspaper article written by Bob Hales, H-A-Y-L-E-S, where it says, financially comfortable geezers demand welfare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't you think like his prayers are proud of him? I wonder if he calls them old geezers. <laughs> if any of you hadn't read this, I'll get you a copy of it. You can just sign some up over there. Now, does anybody else want to say anything or ask a question? Somebody had a question back there. <laughs> I had an idea that was here in Cobb County in July, and we really struggled to move, honestly, in the family county. We, Pickens. Pickens County. <laughs> and we tried very hard to look find something in Cherokee because we were used to the tax break in Cobb and then didn't have it here. But we found a house we loved, and our real estate agent said, well, there is some work on this, so we just went ahead and did it. My question is, I'm not sure I understand on the exemption amount when you say exclude Social Security and exclude pension. Some of us are of the, of the era now that there are no pension payments. Everything we're getting is out of 401k investments. Is that also included? According to the IRS, 401ks is considered private pensions and it would be included in retirement and pension benefits. Okay, that was my question because that, that's going to come up for a lot of people. Yeah, know. well, I looked that up. I did a research with another one of our members and we finally found something on the IRS website. And they consider 401ks part of your pension and retirement. It's called private retirement. And you would have to prove that to the tax assessor's office every year? <laughs> I mean, this is kind of where, you know, Comet was easy, honestly. You went down there, you applied one time, you got it, and, and then you didn't have to deal with it. You didn't have to deal with proving what your income was. You didn't have to do any of that. From, from a stand, legislative standpoint, because I worked with the, our legislators in Atlanta, I also worked with the Georgia Republican Party Legal Division to get some advice to help craft what eventually goes to Atlanta. The, the correct way to do it, and what we would like to see, is that I walk into the tax assessor's office, I request the affidavit for a senior tax exemption. They can look on the federal income tax website. That amount is what I am, my income is. I should never have to show a power bill, a phone bill, or a house mortgage payment. No bureaucrat should look at your private documents. If I declare to the federal government on my tax form, that's my <coughs> end of story. That's the way legislation should be written. We should not have a local person who is not an elected official determining seniors' eligibility for taxes. Amen. 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 Made by Pickens County voters? Because with it being school taxes and a change in ad valorem, and as Lee pointed out, any shortfall has to be requested and made up in part by the state, by the state funds. So we are considered a tier four count. For those of you, how many of the, uh, what's the term that they, the, the people that were born and bred here like to say, if you're behind the gator, if you live in a big canoe, bent tree, and that part of the county, you're part of the tier four high income. So part of our taxes every single year that we pay, this in discussion here, is allocated and sent to Gwinnett County, who is a tier one county. So we actually take part of our tax money and send it to a county that has a population of north of a million people. So 
that's a state issue. When it goes to Atlanta, it'll have to go before the state <coughs> finance committee in the House and Senate, the state ethics, because they have to do the calculations to see how it affects that state revenue number. So, that so some of our money from Pickens County is going out of here and instead of staying here and helping all of us, we're sending it to somebody else? We're considered a rich Careful. <laughs> because of Big Canoe and Bent Tree. Basically. What, what about the rest of us that don't live up there? <laughs> what about this side of the town? <laughs> Those of us that we've raised here also have a term called SOL. Yeah. The average earned income for this county is a little over 35000 But because of places like Bent Tree and Big Canoe and some of these other places that have million dollar homes, it raises the average income of this county to 55000 I'm new to the county, and uh, I moved to Big Canoe two years, almost two years ago. I'm divorced. I sold my house so that I could cash out so I have money to live on. I'll be 70 in June. I moved here. I was shocked to find out. One, I bought a condo in Big Canoe for 145000 that's all I could afford. That's I got priced out of everywhere else around the Atlanta area. The first year, I, in case people don't know, the first year when I moved here, my income is $15,000 a year, by the way. Social Security, that's it. Um, when I first moved here, they would not count my $15,000 income as being my income. They took my total sale price of my house in Cleveland, Georgia, as income, not adjusted gross income or anything like that. My total, total price, even though I had a loss, a substantial loss when I sold the house from when I built it, and even on the adjusted on um, uh, IRS taxes. So I did not get a tax break at all. On my 1,000 square foot condo, I paid $1,240 for my taxes last year on my $145,000 condo. Now, when I went and saw, is it Mr. Dobbs? Yes, it is. No, yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, did he look me in the eye and said, you're lying. Uh, oh, as how can, lot of us how can anybody live on 15,000 a year? And I said, well, I waited to even come and apply for my exemption till I got my taxes done and I brought my Social Security and about $2,500 interest. Uh, I, I am not a wealthy woman. I have a little cash in the bank, and that's what I'm drawing on. But that is my personal experience to moving here. Now, um, a lot of yes. that way. Exactly. So, I'm a former real that's estate agent. That's the county's agent. creative county. It is. But the, the uh, attitude that he had towards me. Yeah, that was the point he made. That's about. incorrect. They do not take money back out of the county. They withhold five meals per year and last year that. I'm out of two, six point seven million dollars. Mm. Well, that's what they all made about. Yeah. A bureau having your income, control of your income uh -huh. too. But even though we're at tier four, and it roughly forty percent of our school students get reduced for free lunches, right? Somewhere around forty percent. So the problem with averages, averages look good. The problem with averages, you got half all the way up here and half way down here. Well, averages is all we got. We have right. no real data right. to do anything. With. No, I'm not. That's the one the sunset calls. I'm just saying. That's oh, no, I'm right before. That's the problem with averages. I'm right before. I hear it all the time. Does anybody else have any questions, anything to say? Uh, the lady in the back, and then I'll give you. <laughs> all right, um, I have a question just for clarification. You talked about um, two or three things about the uh, I guess the exclusion of $100,000 on the value of your house, and then you also talked about $40,000 for the non-taxable income. Was it either or, or were you doing a combination? It's going to be either or. There's three questions, and one of them is leave it as is, which is less than $25,000 income, and which includes Social Security and your retirement. The next one would be the income cap, which we're dealing back and forth between $30,000 and $40,000. And the other one would be the assessed value. So Whichever one gets the most votes is the one that's got to be worked on legislative-wise to get on the ballot for the November election. Um, I, I do mortgages here, and 
own a house here and have lived here for over 40 years. And I do, I can validate that, you know, I hear people come to my office all the time, they're looking at houses and don't buy in Pickens because of the tax break or they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll look in three or four counties, but they come around. But, um, you know, having looked at a lot of taxes and a lot of people's income and a lot of tax returns, um, it seems to me like if you can, if you can work with like the 40,000 or even 30,000 taxable income and exclude the pension income and the, um, the social security non-taxable income, I think it will affect a lot more people. Oh yeah. yeah and I know, you know, my, my in-laws were in that in that. Trying market. to convince our county officials of something else. So. I mean, my, my in-laws who put passed away last year, but they were in that income bracket, and you know, it just there was there was nothing that could be done. You know, all their income was was non-taxable and it was fixed income, and I just I think you can affect a lot more people if you work on the income oh, than yeah, hundred thousand. That's what we're trying to convince. So I didn't I didn't know if you were a proponent of both sides of that, but. I mean, just I was just going to try to validate that I'm, I'm definitely for the income, oh, non-taxable well, income. That that's what we're going to vote on come May 22nd, sir. Well, my question is simple. You keep talking about all these different ways to go about this. You said that how many counties just in North Georgia already have this? All the time I downloaded off the computers the counties up in the North Georgia. I know. I was from, we came up here from Douglas County. We had the exemption. You said Cobb County does. Why are we reinventing the wheel if all these other counties have already done this? Why are we starting from scratch? That makes no sense to me at all. Why can't the legislators go look at this is what other counties are doing? And wasn't it Dawson County you talked about at another meeting that had just done this? Why are we, we reinventing something? Why are we starting from scratch? Yeah, it's green. Because, the county, yeah, it's green. because the county government never agreed to it. But we're doing it under straw vote. We're bypassing the county government. Is that not correct? Yeah. yeah. Basically, that's it. It's not a matter of bypassing. As, as voted on, it's not bypassing. It's not bypassing. As, as voters in the county and, and citizens of the county, there are multiple ways for it to be done. This group did request that the local commissioners, the three commission board, address this. And they're not going to. We know that. Correct. So, legislatively, by the Georgia Constitution, citizens are allowed to, and that's what I said originally, we got involved because we want citizens to have the opportunity for redress of grievance with their government, be local, state, or federal. That's why we're facilitating this trial poll being put on, is by the Georgia Constitution, when this group came to us, we as an executive committee of the Republican Party decided that we would facilitate having it done because the local commissioners decided they would not get involved. Just remember that when you vote for the commission. Yeah, yeah. 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 Why do they not? Well, the biggest thing is not. Their taxes. That's not good. 
And that's using the low skin, the high spectrum, and the high spectrum. Well, again, you know, now, Lee, you said we don't know what it's doing. That's just a protection. And the last time I heard somebody say you got a high to see what it'll do, it was Nancy Pelosi. Oh, <laughs> Lord. So you got to understand, I, as a father of three, the oldest in college is up to become a father. But you work. I do work. So you get increased. About 90 to 100 hours a week. I work 70 hours a week. I'm missing work to be here tonight when you get there. And I appreciate you coming. But you've got to understand, five years, if you end up, your figures based on what you're looking at are valid because I've checked. It's a good estimate. But there's no clear way to know what this will do to work with families and people start down. There's no way we'll know. And by the time we can change something, we could have already bankrupted this coaster. No. 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 Well, now Nobody's here to speak to us from the school board. They will be on the 13th meeting. Yeah, we are. And he's been here before. Yeah, yeah the school board spoke before. Well, I just think he's very good. But they were so. They're not here. Well, that's maybe my fault and some other people's fault. There were a lot of dealing back and forth on what days to have these meetings. And the, the this week and 13th, it was chosen, and then April the 12th. <coughs> It, well, it's I, it's I, not I, on purpose. In I, fact, I, I, I will be the first one to say, because I have two elderly parents, all my aunts and uncles, both sides of the family, are still alive and are retired. I'll be real quick to say that the seniors in the county need something more substantial than $25,000. Okay. But let me give you an example of this. I'm just going on the $40,000, not counting pensions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some numbers from somebody related to me. Let's say, Uncle Father. Retired military. Are you talking about forty thousand income cap or the forty thousand assessed base? Forty thousand income cap. Okay. <clears throat> retired military. He makes four thousand dollars a month for a military retired. He's also retired from IBM. He makes close to six thousand dollars a month from IBM. Four one K close to seven thousand dollars a month. He also owns rental property. <coughs> and that's in Pickens County? And that's not in Pickens County. Oh. He does not live in Pickens County. He wouldn't even ask for the break. The well, he's making well money. over a hundred thousand dollars a year, but exactly. but through the taxes and the rentals, he would only show thirty-six, thirty-eight thousand dollars legitimately. Um, that's one more than most people in Pennsylvania make. That's, that's double, true. if not triple, what most people in Pennsylvania make. That would be the most unfair. Proposal out there, but I'm still out there because we don't know what this is going to do. No, and it will, we absolutely fine. don't. Now, don't think well, you're getting me because, oh, not, because I agree no, I that like seniors need something. <laughs> well, what would be wrong with just simply increasing the threshold that's there now from 25000 to 40000 But they count Social Security. Every time. Well, most, most retired people say my mother. That's all she's got. Yeah, exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. she doesn't own property anymore, but that's all she's got. And so that's all my people have got. So, so, okay, so yeah. but, but that that doesn't seem fair to me in my mind if that's what most people well, draw from, and you're excluding that from, from a figure of twenty five or forty thousand dollars. I mean most people in this county really how don't make many years have you paid school since I was 19 years old. And that's how long. <laughs> <laughs> probably just about all of us in here has paid 50 plus years. Our grandkids even graduated college. My, my mother's family, there, was, there, was, there were four old maids and two bachelors that all owned property. They brought property taxes from the time they were in their 20s until their babies when they died. Yeah. And they never had the a single soul in the school. Is that the only way to go to the tax rate? Did your parents pay Did your parents Yes, they did. And then they lived in Cobb County, and when they got 65, they didn't have to pay to do that. Okay, Cobb County's got industry. There's Rocky. What they did when my parents turned 65. What, what is there here? You mentioned all these things that have opened. Yeah. Is that going to employ anybody to live a wage? It's going to be 8 10 $12 an hour. Is that a livable wage anymore? My point is that. That's totally. 
different. Yeah, but, but, but she used the and brought them in play immediately. Like there's all this building and things going on. There's really not as compared to Cherokee County or, or whatever we use Cherokee and Cobb and all these other things. Like it's like considerably larger than ours. Considerably higher. Dawson County is as comparable. But Dawson County, over four times as much money goes into Dawson County coffers from their squads than it does here because they have a retail on 400. The we don't have them. But they didn't have I, I'm, I'm going to the suggest if you really want these breaks, you're going to have to move away from the bed room community and get some light industrial in here, promote tourism in here. That's what we've been so trying to do. So they can cover it because the homeowners are what we've been trying to do. <coughs> the people, your kids and your grandkids, your great grandkids' age are the one that's going to bear the burden for a safe and using tax. Well, that's normal in every county. It's been that way in every county. Then Except the, ours. Increase the, increase the $35,000 workshop. But that's something. That's something that there's no way that there's no way that people in county will pass this not knowing what it's going to do to their tax. Not knowing for sure. Mm -hmm. He's running the majority of the voters. Yeah. He's running the meeting. Well, I don't know if you do, sir. What I, what I, what I would like to clarify a little bit is whatever proposal gets the most votes on the straw poll, mm -hmm. from there there will be a committee formed with citizens from all four corners of the county, from property owners to commercial to landowners to seniors to school board to county administrators so that we can write legislation that we want to push down to Atlanta with far more input in it. And that way, you still adage, if I have 20 people on the committee, those 20 know 20 more, now we got 400 opinions. So anything that we do afterwards from a Republican Party standpoint will be to have <coughs> committees that actually help write it and do all those math formulas. So that if we have to increase it by from 25 to 28, or from 25 to 40, whatever comes out in the end, we've run those calculations in depth and we've taken input from multiple people. But can anybody? Any no story? one can predict exactly, exactly right. And no one can also predict a blank check. Ms. Passion, also, yeah, no one is not passing. Here, here, address on track. Okay, whatever. Yeah, sorry. In the ballpark here. But we also cannot. My, my parents are able. We can right. also not predict. Exactly. Then why are these being made so high? We can also not start somewhere. Please, 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 please. We can also not predict in a five year span that Highway 515, with multiple real, uh, real uh, retail locations, hospital, medical, will not be built and be occupied in that five year span. Exactly what you said. We all need to be proud of our community. We all need to talk about it. I use Mr. Cagle and myself from the standpoint. I don't know about how many of you are working today and travel over the entire state. I covered five states for the last 15 years. I just retired last week from a Fortune 500. I'll be 16 in June. I took a job and started a new position with another company Monday of this week. So I retired from one. I got, 20, I got 14 years in the Air Force, combat veteran, and 20 years with a Fortune 500. I'm still working. My daughter's in her third year of veterinary college. Her undergraduate was paid for on a full scholarship. I paid school taxes the entire time. And if something were to pass, I will continue to pay my school taxes because I see the value of educating our future, which is our young people. But there are seniors that we do need to address and look at the needs. So whatever goes through the, the stronghold, it will be committees designed to drill down and look at scenarios and we'll get, the one thing that I've had a problem in the 20 almost years I've lived in this county is we have tremendous amount of talent. We have retired people all over this county who run corporations as CEOs and CFOs who never get asked their opinion about anything. We have talent that never gets the opportunity to voice their opinion. We do it the same way we've done it for the last 45 years. And therein lies the problem with economic development, bringing new industries in, bringing seniors an opportunity to have a better life and a better a reason to move here, and our young people not to leave here. 
So it's okay. a large overall problem. But this is trying to address the people who need the relief the most, in my opinion. But it's going to be a joint effort of all seniors and working adults as well. We have to do something like Will says. This county is dying. And if we keep re-electing the same people over and over and over again, might as well just dig a hole and shovel the dirt on I joked to a friend of mine the other day, the only reason people stop in pickings is because the light turns red. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they would be boogie at 80 miles an hour through there like to do on 575. Somebody had a question over here? Yes, ma'am. My name is Jerry Speckbox. I moved here about 40 years ago. Before we moved up here, I went to the county tax office and asked them about exemption. We moved here from Pike County, which the population of Pike County is roughly 6,500 people, and you could put Pickens in Pike County, and it's completely tax exempt at 62. Wow. Yeah, wow. But when I went to the county tax office, they said, you're, you know, I was working for time. And when you turn 62, 65, I can't remember what they told me. I'd be tax exempt. Well, that was a lie. They didn't tell the whole truth. They didn't say it was waiting on income. Which I think is. And let me, my other question is we're talking that understand two questions. One, how weighted is this straw poll? How what? How weighted will this straw poll be in the legislation? How much weight? How much weight will be in the state legislation? Oh. Okay. The April 15th or April 13th, whatever the date is, we'll do it at the college. I will, and I, not to demean anybody's knowledge of the legislative process, but if you, you need to understand, it's weighted in the regard that the, the senators and representatives know that the people of Pickens County want to change. That's, that really is it. The legislative process, and I explained to Lee and her group, Whatever you want to pass, you better buy gas and parking permits in downtown Atlanta. Because whatever we send, if you don't go there and fight for it, you will not get back what you want. Bill can attest to that. That's why that I'll give you a list of all uh, Senators Payne, uh, Gooch, and Representative Jasper. Phone them. Write them. Email them. Keep it coming. Just bombard them till the computers explode. Let them know what you want and tell them, do not water down our tax exemption. One last question, clarification. The 40000 tax exempt on income over and above your retirement. Is that uh, so the so Social Security and pension. Yeah. Yeah. Over two, and above. Those two things, Social Security or however your pension is in Social Security. 401k is exempt also. Yes, according to the IRS, 401k is considered so retirement. If I make $40,000, I'm, I'm, not excuse me, if I make additional income from working or whatever over my pension, that's what would be the taxable part. Right, right. It would be, well, yeah, to get the exemption. But there's so many people that aren't have that kind of income, like this gentleman said, $100,000 or more, if it's 75. They won't pay their taxes. I spoke to many of them. They said, well, no, I make too much money. I, I prefer to pay the taxes. And they're confused about if a senior tax exemption passed, it's automatically granted to you whether you want it or not. But then that's not true. You have to go sign up for it. And there are many, many seniors say they will continue to pay for it, the children's education, even though the tax exemption has been passed. I mean, we don't know. They're, there's 2,902 homes owned by people and occupied by people in this county. They're not all going to claim an income tax, I mean, the ta uh, senior property tax exemption. Many, many of them will continue to pay the taxes. I've got some neighbors who told me they're going to continue to pay the good taxes. Yes, Bart. I'm Bart Connolly. Some of you know me. Some of you will know me. Let me ask you, how many seniors are in this room right now, and I just want one person from each household to stand up. If you are a senior, and one person from each household would stand up. I'm the people standing. If a senior exemption passes, and, and Lee just said some people said they would not take the exemption even if it passed, 
Do they still contribute to the school system? How many people that are standing right now would sit down and not take the exemption if it passed? <laughs> so you can see, I believe you might be getting some phone calls, but a lot of people, the seniors, just like the homestead exemption, when you buy your house, you go sign up for it. If there is a senior exemption, this is something to figure in your equation because you've done great on these numbers. But look at the people here, just a small sample. Now all of us stood up and said, yes, we'll take the senior exemption if it's passed. That's just, I wanted to give you something to put in your equation. Yes. Yeah. coming back in and upping the values just a little bit and affecting probably 2,000 homes to hit that 101,000 mark. Well, actually, the 100,000 comes off the assessed value. If you get a home that's worth 150,000, uh, well, uh, they wouldn't even pay any then. According to my chart, let me get one that's out the floor. The way it's calculated, so if you've got on this chart that I show, you pay taxes on 40% of your assessed value of your home. So if you've got an assessed value, fair market value on your tax bill of $200,000, 40% of that is what you pay taxes on, minus the $5,000 that's a homestead exemption and everybody pays. So you would be ta paying taxes on $200,000 times 40% minus $5,000. 75. Okay, so it, but you, you see here on the chart, you wouldn't be paying any school tax. It doesn't start until a house reaches a fair market value of 350, no, 300,000. So the 300,000 times 40% minus the 5,000 minus the 100,000. So whatever's left over, that's what you'd be paying taxes on. And that's the way I've calculated here. The, the 40,000 says value helps no one. It, 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 it helps no one. Is that just on school tax? I'm sorry? Is that just school tax? Yes, yeah. yeah. tax only. That's all we're dealing with here. County taxes will not change. They're a separate entity. It's just school taxes. Thank you. Anybody you also is? might mention that if there's an across the board raise in the millage rate, then, you know, we just went through that in Cherokee County and everybody filed appeals and I got my taxes reduced by $300 because I wouldn't just shut up until they. Everybody, <laughs> 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 
Yeah. That's basically what it is, is a survey of do we want to stay with the red barn theory, that's the way we've done it forever, or do we want to think tomorrow as silver stop burning up the hay? Even though they may have the 40,000 uh, uh, and the 30,000 income, 40,000 watered down amounts on the straw poll, that don't mean it's written in stone. After the straw poll, that's when i got to go to work. I've got to go down and convince those people down at the Capitol, we need this, not this. And it I, helps no one. As I told Lee when just yesterday, there are 2,200 people signed a petition that they want to make a change in this. Those 2,200 people, if they really care, they need to contribute, they need to travel, they need to help convince the legislators that our seniors need it and what that is. There's three committees we got to approach them to capital, and I'm going to need a group of people to go with me and understand what's going on. And we got to just demand that they make these changes. But my work begins after the straw poll. Right now, I have no control over the verbiage of the straw poll. I've got it this far, and I hate it because I'm losing control. <laughs> yes, sir. We owe you a tremendous amount of appreciation for all you've done for us. Yes, thank you. Yeah. You want a list of those of us that want to go with you? You want well, a card on the list? Hey, there's my card over there. You got my email address. Yeah. Let me know. And we'll all meet for lunch one day and go over our strategy. Kevin's volunteered. Tony's volunteered. I've got some more people that's volunteered. Yes, ma'am. At what age are we talking? 60, 62, 65. 65. Some people were not really clear about that. Yeah. I need, I need clarification on that. It's 62 and Paul. It's not 65. Yeah, I know. It's 62 and Paul. I, I, I couldn't get that past him. 62 wouldn't work here. <laughs> no. No. I couldn't get that past That's just like I couldn't get my plan A past anybody. That was total exemption for 62 and over with mm -hmm. under 10 acres. That got chucked out right off. I need clarification on something. This twenty-five thousand on the current one is that gross income or yes. is that yes, gross income? Thank you for coming. Yeah, I know we don't live over gross; we live on net. That's one of the changes I wanted made. A couple, of, a couple of the other things have been brought forth, and actually, the Democratic Party put forth some good points when they finally engaged with us. Yes, they did. Oh, yes, they did. David, David Robson they came and said, me. Yes, they had some good. Yes. Yes. Well, you think about it. How many, of, how many people in here are Democrats? I like to leave them. How many Democrats do we have in the room? There you go. So, originally, they were going to ask Democrat voters to take a Republican ballot for the primary. And... As I said, during the presidential election, I posted, I even said on my radio show, the only people in the 2016 election cycle who should be upset are Bernie Sanders supporters. <laughs> he got screwed by his party, by everything. We all get what we want in those election cycles. The fact the Democratic Party decided to let their voters vote for their choice for governor in their primary and still vote on this as a senior in this county, I'm very proud of it. The Democrats had some good points on their suggestions. Right. Even I liked them. Right. They so, also have a formidable candidate for governor this time. Stacey A. or Stacey A. Yeah. I can't remember. But, but um, one of the things that, that we talked about with them and their, their points that were brought up was the, the idea of a clarification, and I actually verified this with state party as well. The term uh, household ideally should be changed to the deed holder of record. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what one of the changes. That right clarifies there. the legal terminology. If Mr. and Ms. Smith live in the house and their names are on the deed, they are the only people who are responsible for tax on that property. Yes. If Mr. Smith passes, God forbid, Mrs. Smith is the only person who is responsible for the taxes. Not her caretaker not a, not that a, lives with her. Yeah, not a boarder. Not a niece who's going through a divorce who lives there and pays the, the cable bill because she wants to have cable and grandma never had it. 
<laughs> the deed holder of record. So I, I have learned a great deal in the process of this too as I've reached out uh, and, 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 I, and I have a degree in constitutional law, but constitutional law and legislative issues are two separate things. So it's been a good learning process and I hope it will be for the citizens of the county. We've engaged with a lot of younger voters who have concerns and at the same time they become engaged. Um, so we're, we're happy with that too because those are the people we want to support us to be a part of the community. <coughs> Yeah, I've learned a lot, a tremendous amount. I mean, I could write a book. I would call it everything you always wanted to know about property taxes, but now sorry you asked. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's overwhelming. But I'm happy with the fact that I've finally gotten it on straw poll and will be on the November general election, whichever one y'all choose. <clears throat> so that's all I got to say. Has anybody else got questions? Uh, we'll adjourn for the night. Thank you. Thank you.